Margaret, Margaret, Sh uh, let's see, Schwinchowski. I have to practice her last name. All right, so let's bring Margaret back after she put her flute away. Bravo! Hi. <laughs> it's Swinkowski. Swinkowski. Thank you, dear. Swinkowski. Yeah, practice more practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, so you, what, what, what was that? That was like so many notes and so fast. It was fast. a lot of notes. It a lot of notes. A, yeah. Um, it's a little etude by um, Johannes Donjon. And um, he just wrote a bunch of food etudes. And it's called Elegy. And it's one of my favorite ones. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. So I can now see that someone has been moving the whole house yep <laughs> and it's still playing like this amazing <laughs> yeah believe me it's amazing actually it's been, it's been a struggle and and i i didn't realize i was gonna be playing and so uh -huh. um, yeah. an interesting uh, moment when you told me that last week yeah. um <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah we're 26 years in in our house in um new jersey and we just moved to delaware we're building a house down here but we're in an apartment um, temporarily for the next few months while we build. Yeah. So yeah, it's a big move and my hands are actually killing me from packing and unpacking and and taping boxes and untaping and, and yeah. just carrying stuff. My hands are like killing yeah. me. Yeah, so so how, how, how many, um, when did you arrive into a new place? A uh, week ago Friday, we've been here like 10 days. Yeah. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. It's so it, how how do you feel? Is it a um? Do you feel uh you know very stressed out, or do you feel a new beginning? Um, it's hard to feel the new beginning yet. I do feel like we're kind of settling into this space. 
But, you know, it's just crazy. When you go to a new state, you've got to do new insurances, new driver's license, new everything. And, you know, and I have one of my daughters that I'm trying to get her set up in an apartment in Vermont. And we've been, I had to drive 10 hours back and forth to Vermont three yeah. days before we moved to get right. her stuff up there. So it's, it's just been really crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, can I, can I ask, um, uh, the, the place you're settling down is, are there any like a uh, huge reason why you, first of all, move out of New Jersey and why you pick that place? Is there okay. any any uh, particular reason? We picked Delaware because of the taxes. Oh. A lot of people that are moving here. And our really? taxes are going to really? take like a 90% reduction in our property. Wow. You mean property tax low property or tax. what? Property okay. tax. And okay. sale, there's no sales tax down here. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> Financial. It's a little cheaper down here. So that's, that's yeah. um, part of the reason. I mean, my husband retired. Um, yeah. He was 40, 45 years on Broadway. Um, and uh, so that's a, a long time. So yeah. He's in the city and he's pretty tired of the city. I love the city. I'm, I'm not retired. He's retired. So, <laughs> so um, we're, we're uh, I'm, you know, once I'm actually, I'm uh, unfortunately retired at the moment because there's nothing happening for us um, with the pandemic. But, um, you know, as soon as things come back, I'll be back. Uh, I have a car. I'll be in it <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. That's wonderful. So Margaret, um, uh, we, we have, know each other for a while mm -hmm. um do you still remember how we got hooked up of course i do and i'll never forget our dear friend ruth ruth was one of my best friends ruth kaylee and um she she you know told me about you early on and then we finally got connected and uh when she passed away it was really sad yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a while. So anyway, um, let's talk about, um, what's actually, going on. Yeah. It's actually really funny that we're musicians, but we met because of ice skating. Oh yeah. Right. right. <laughs> because Ruth right. was an ice skating colleague of mine, judge yeah. of mine. Right. So that's how we met yeah. through an ice skater. Right. Right. <laughs> It's interesting. It's Is that the, what funny? a twist. And but she loves music. That's oh yes, she loves music. Linked to us, right? Yep, She's yep. just like always saying Margaret this, Margaret that, Margaret this, Mar Ching this, Ching that. <laughs> She's been telling me about you for a long time. Yeah, so it's so yeah. sweet. And uh, so now I know you move and it's a new thing. And um, so. Talk about, uh, I want to know a little bit about your background, how you grew up and how you became a musician. Okay. Well, I grew up in a family of musicians. My father was a music teacher at um, high schools and then finally at uh, state college. When I was little, we moved to Vermont and um, that's where I was raised. I hesitate to say that I grew up because I hope I never do. But um <laughs> Yeah, we, I lived in a house filled with music. Um, my parents both played the violin. Um, and like I said, my dad was a music professor. And so I, I started, actually, I started on piano and I didn't really like it. And then I started on violin and I didn't really like it. And then I went to my brother's band concert and there was a little girl with red hair who was in the fifth grade and I was in the fourth grade and she was playing the flute. And I said, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so I started on flute and I just, you know, I never stopped. I was, um, you know, did all the high school festivals and all of that stuff. I stayed in Vermont and did my undergraduate because I was able to live at home and do my, um, my undergraduate work at uh, Johnson State College and, and go tuition free because my dad was a professor there. So that was um, invaluable. I was playing the Vermont Symphony. Um, I studied, actually studied, early studied with um, Ed Powell um, of Powell Flutes fame. Um, he retired um, when I was in my second year of college in Johnson and I started studying with Sophie Solberger, who was an excellent technician. She really drilled the technical stuff. And then um, I did um, two degrees there. I did an education degree and a performance degree. So I graduated four and a half years and then I took a half year off and then I auditioned for graduate schools and I came to New York and studied uh, with uh, Tom Neifanger. And um, he was at the Aaron Copeland School of Music at Queens College at the time. 
Mm. So that's, that was, he was really formative with um, changing the embouchure to a very different style, a more American style. And I was more like a French style before that. And I, you know, I, he was amazing. And, um, and then I started freelancing when I was done with graduate school and played with a lot of little orchestras like um, Hunter Symphony, the Bronx Symphony, um, Queens Philharmonic and mm -hmm. um, Westchester Symphony. I spent, uh, I played out in the Harrisburg Symphony, subbed um, in uh, Scranton, uh, New England, uh, the New England, NEP out in Scranton. And, um, and then I started doing a summer festival in Lancaster, um, like almost 30 years ago. <laughs> And I still do it every summer, except this summer, of course, because of the virus, we did not have a festival. But that's a wonderful festival. Um, Gary Sheldon is the music director. He's originally from Long Island. Um, and he is just such a fabulous music director. I mean, he's just wonderful. I just love him to pieces. And um, it, it's like a mini spoleto. So we have like orchestral concerts. We have children's concerts. There's dance and art and there's vocal music that goes on too, and all these other little concerts by local artists. And um, and then there's chamber music. I get to do a lot of chamber music there and playing principal in the orchestra. Well, I've been doing that for a long time. Um, I've been playing in New York. I've been subbing on Broadway for years and years and years. I play, um, I still, I've been subbing Phantom of the Opera for about 30 years. Wow. Um, wow. I know, it's been there that long. Yeah. And <laughs> um, they're longer than that. And. Yeah. Um, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, the New York Gilbert and Sullivan players. I'm now the principal flute player with them and just love doing GNS. It's so much yeah. fun. The yeah. The are so fabulous and the orchestra is just a blast. We have a great time. Yeah. Uh, so it's, those are all kind of the peripheral things that I do as part of freelancing, you know, you, yeah. you know, yeah. have, have flute will travel <laughs> wherever. Um, yeah. But, and you uh, do, you do a lot of chamber music too. And I do. We had, I had a chamber music group we started when I was just out of graduate school um, called the West End Chamber Players. So that we had, we did a Carnegie concert. Um, I did my Carnegie debut back in the early 90s. I'm going to start wow. dating myself here. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then um, I also had a flute and harp duo with um, Emily Mitchell, who was here in, in New York. And then she moved to Texas and that kind of, kind of burnt up the, ability to continue but yeah. just absolutely love making music with her she was really special and at the festival i do we have a lot of chamber music i actually we have a flute cello um harp trio there called trio joyeux <laughs> which is a, a great um great fun for me in the summers um and then of course uh the main thing that i do now is the palisades virtuosi um uh, and that's how did how did the how did that uh, whole group start it like like when and how? Okay, so like I met Don. Um, it's comprised of a flute, clarinet, and piano. Um, Don McCrinsky is the clarinet player, and the pianist is Ron Levy. I met Don probably back in the '80s in a reading orchestra downtown, um, and we just hit it off. Um, musically, and I played, you know, in whatever orchestra it was, I think it was the New Amsterdam Symphony, um, back, you know, in the 80s and 90s, and um, played with him there, and we just had a really nice connection musically, it was just right there, and um, and then I met Ron shortly after I got married, so about 30 years ago. <laughs> Life just goes too fast. How did that happen? I yeah. know. So I met Ron, and um, Ron is really... He's my uh, he's my my musical partner. He's my other half when it comes to to creating music, and and he's just and the two of them together are my other two thirds. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Yeah. But, um, we started uh, because Ron and Don knew each other because they were both from North Jersey, and um, Ron and I had been doing a lot of concerts together. And Don was out on the road, and he came off the road um, and came off the tour, and. Ron said, hey, let's start a trio. So we started a trio. We did a couple concerts. And then we were like, uh, there's no other music for this combination. Mm -hmm. And yeah. after like two concerts, we did like all the good stuff. Yeah. And so Ron said, well, let's start commissioning music. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in 2003, we started commissioning music. And we have just received our 90th piece wow. of music. Yeah. 
awesome. It's pretty incredible in what's that? 2003, 17 years. Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. So we've been really, you know, aggressively commissioning um, music for this combination. So yeah, where there yeah. was not, where there was hardly any repertoire, now there's an entire library because of what we've done. So, I mean, I'm extremely proud of that. I and mean, we have some amazing composers we have like Paul Moravec and mm -hmm. Erica Wazen and Joe Turin and Melinda Wagner. I mean, I could go on and on. Mm -hmm. They're all listed at the PV website. Um, and uh, so that's basically, and, and that's what we've been doing. I mean, right now, what we're doing during the pandemic, we're not doing much of anything except meeting. And we had just finished the last sessions recording our, our new CD that's coming out. Um, we have uh, seven volumes of New American Masters. That's what we call it, the New American Masters series. Six volumes are out, and we just finished recording the seventh one, which is a two-volume set of mm. songs and stories. So it's all pieces that we've commissioned that have um, narration and song. Let me see if uh, let me let me see if I can uh, uh, see that just the recording image, okay? To see if from I can um, share the screen. Let's see. Uh, these are the. Oh, yes, right. Yeah. yeah. These are, so From the Hudson Valley was my first um, CD that I recorded on my own with Ron Levy and um, a couple of guest artists. I had Scott Brubaker's on there. And then there's also a, sm a small chamber orchestra that was comprised of um, a bunch of my local colleagues and friends uh -huh. um, and conducted by Joanne Paletta. So that was my first, um, that piece from the Hudson Valley was by Leo Kraft. And I was part of a consortium that commissioned it. And then um, I actually got to perform it with a with orchestra at the National Flute Association convention. Um, and then I subsequently did this recording. Um, and then the pink one there, the Palisades Virtuosi, that's our debut album. And that has um, traditional works, some of the traditional works of the few, the, mm. the piece by Danzi and by um, Bloch and uh, Sanson. Mm. Trios on that. Nice. So we're looking at uh, Margaret's website right now. Yes, another uh, tri tri uh, chamber music group that I play with is Division. Mm -hmm. It's run by Kurt Briggs, who's also just a wonderful human being and uh, and beautiful musician. And he and his wife, um, wonderful cellist uh, Matt Gerke, um, we did this uh, chamber. Um, it's like I think it has oboe and flute, and I think it had viola. And, and it was with two singers. And it's just this 80 minute cycle of songs on, on Death on the Planets. And that was uh, and poetry by John Woodruff there. And that just came out last year. I think it came out last year. And it's just such an amazing recording. It came out really great. Um, and just that's whatever the latest thing I have out is what's up, you know, mm -hmm. most prominently. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have a couple of other and then the, these are the other CDs I did with um, with uh, Division and with another local composer, Jeffrey Kaufman. And then um, below that, I have all the, the Palisades Virtuosi CDs um, mm. are listed under there. So yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> it's pretty um, it's been pretty amazing, and and I've been really really fortunate to be able to have such wonderful colleagues and um, opportunities to perform and record. It's been great. Shall we all? Shall we listen to one of your um your music with the uh, the 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 legacy duo? Sure. You want to talk about? It? Let me um, sit up. Okay, this is a lovely woman uh, that uh -huh. I met. Um, uh -huh. Her name is Nancy Bloomer Jackson. She's uh, a beautiful composer. Um, she has passed away just recently last year. It was very sad. Um, but she's from the Bay Area, and this was with um my the harpist um, Emily Mitchell. And this is called Julia's Song. Mm. Okay. So it's a kind of a older recording, right? Yes, it is. Yep. Um,
That was beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. I mean, even you know, the, the video quality is not as high, but yeah. music it was it was something we did for our local television station up in Westchester. Oh yeah. The best I could get from yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, Hi, um, family. so yeah. <laughs> so um now tell Tell me a, a little bit of process uh, of like like how you uh, get hold of composers who are willing to write things for you, and um, you know that just like in a in a quicker way. I'm sure it's complicated. Um, it is complicated, but for the most part, um, we we get people like knocking down our doors <laughs> a little bit now. And, but in the beginning, um, it was really people that we knew um, uh, or that we already had a personal connection to. Um, uh, one of the early pieces that um, we, the very first piece we did was uh, by a really young composer. I think he was only like 25 at the time. And Ron had met him and it was called Lepidopterology. And it was, he wrote it because Ron is, he loves butterflies. And um, so he, uh, he wrote uh, this piece called Lepidopterology because that's the science and study of butterflies. And, and it was about the, the traveling of the monarchs. And, um, and it was, it's a really cool piece. It's on our very first album. And, um, and one of the other early composers was one that, um, that I had heard his music. I loved and, and asked if he would write a piece. It was Bob Mono, Robert Mono. Um, and he wrote us a gorgeous piece. Um, so it, it, a lot of it was personal connections. And then it's like, oh, well, we really like the music of this composer. Let's see if they would like to write us a piece. We don't pay a lot. Our commissions are not very high, but composers will write for us because they know that we're going to perform the pieces and that we're going to perform them again and again and again, and that we will eventually record them. So um, they know that that's, it's now, it's a tried and true thing. We've been, you know, we're on our seventh album already of uh, new pieces. So um, we don't have trouble getting composers to write for us. Um, sometimes we can't, get the one we want at the moment in time or we think we have them and then they they get busy but eventually you know we've we've been able to um get the people that we really want to write for us um you know and and we do like get a lot of people that composers that'll send us submissions you know to say uh, you want to commission me here's my music so we listen to them and and when we can we try to use them you know um but i it, it all started early on I, with a composition class when i was in in college um we had a composition class and everybody's assignment was to write a solo flute piece and i said hey i'll put them on a senior recital which i did like an extra i did like three recitals my senior year and one of them was a 20th century music recital which i did like yeah. a couple of standard 20th century pieces and then i the second half or the first half of the program was yeah. all the like seven or eight pieces that had been written in that class. Yeah. <laughs> so I got, I got started commissioning early. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a new bone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, so how do you balance out being a 
performer, which means you have to practice. And to do all these administrative work for your ensemble. Um, are you like always very organized and you're always this kind of a leadership kind of personality? Yeah, I would say. I'm sure the guys would say that too. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, they always say if you want something done, ask a busy person because a busy person knows how to fit things into their schedule. So it's compartmentalizing. I have six different emails and it's like when I'm working on trio stuff, I'm on that email. When I'm working on home stuff, I'm on that email. When I'm working on, well, it used to be Girl Scouts, but like school and Girl Scout stuff, that would be another email. It's like yeah. I just compartmentalize everything and I attack one thing at a time. Oh my God. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. That's it's, amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting I, a little better. The girls are older. So that, yeah. That's yeah. And, and I, can I say that? Like you have a twin. I have twin girls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's a lot of work. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and one, they one go like, to different they, schools. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Oh one, my one, God. Say one is, one is like nine and two is like 10. So yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Keeps, keeps me running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's just so amazing how you do it. Yeah. And I was just thinking, um, now uh Mike has been uh doing this uh you know Broadway gig for so long. Um uh, what do you call him as uh do you call him what? Uh tech master. <laughs> He's a stagehand. He's a stagehand. Stage <laughs> okay. He's running automation at Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 13 years, yeah. yeah. 14 years, I guess, whatever. No, so, it's yeah. So, so, yeah, it's like 16, 16 years he did it. That, yeah. Yeah. So, so he has to be at the set sometimes early, late afternoon, right? Like five o'clock or something. I think he had to be there an hour and a half before the show. Oh, okay. That's he not too bad. I was just thinking, well, like, he had you, guys, he had you guys have no, have no sort of normal sort of dinner together much. Yeah, Sunday night. Oh, okay. That was it, Sunday night or Monday night, depending oh, on where the yeah. schedule was. But yeah, 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 Sunday. yeah. <laughs> but now it's all different. He's retired, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now he can enjoy the the, the, the normalcy, yeah? Uh -huh. So so now you are a musician and Mike works in the music industry. And did you ever... Um, want your children to to play music full-time they don't seem to be interested in it one of them is uh really interested in like photography digital photography and stuff like that and the other is is interested in video game art so that's where they're headed <laughs> they're going their own road and that's good that's what they need to do Oh gosh! So um, now you do a lot of performing, a lot of uh, uh, you know organizing. Do you teach? Oh yes, I also teach. Um, I just now I'm only teaching in the little conservatory. It's so in Ridgewood, the Ridgewood Conservatory. Actually, it's in Paramus now, but it used yeah. to be in Ridgewood, called the Ridgewood Conservatory. Yeah. Uh, and I have a, a few students that I teach there, and of course everything's virtual right now. But yeah. um, once we're back in the studio uh, yeah. in person, I believe we're going to be going every other week. Mm -hmm. um and we're going to be um i think every other week is virtual every other week will be in person mm -hmm. that's what they're planning to do yeah but so, they're not back yet i am not until you know the governor says it's yeah like, so how, flute, flute is absolutely the worst instrument it's the flute? worst why yeah the worst because we <laughs> skew when we play we push so much air out we lose 90% of the air we blow. Only 10% makes the sound. The other 90% is dispersed. Oh my they God. say you got to be like 12, 15 feet away oh from a flute player. So it's hard to play chamber music when you're 15 yeah. feet apart from yeah. each other. So yeah. I, it's going to be a, a challenge. Yeah. We'll back. I mean, we have some tentative dates in the fall, but they're very tentative. Um, mm. And everything is subject to how, you know, how things progress. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, from your experience of doing a Zoom lesson, um, can you tell us a little bit about the pros and cons you feel? There aren't many pros. 
Um, not many pros at all, except except it's really easy. Like if the kid's five minutes late, and you want to give them the five minutes, you can give them the five minutes because you know you're at home. You're not going to a gig anywhere because there's no gigs. So um, you know that's that's a pro. Uh, the flexibility, the being able of not having the travel time to go someplace to teach, um, you know, that's that's a pro. Um, it's really hard to teach because you can't like, you know, I have this one student whose thumb is like constantly in the wrong position. And in lessons, I would sit there and hold her thumb in the right position. I can't do that. Yeah. You know, I can't prop, you know, poke where I need to poke to get them to stand up straight. I, it's yeah. like that whole physical aspect of it is, is frustrating. And the most frustrating part is playing duets because I feel like duets are the great teacher in, in, teaching young kids especially how to phrase and how to breathe and how to make sense out of a piece of music, you know, by emulating what you're doing. So what I ended up, and obviously you can't play duets in a Zoom lesson because it, it just, you know, it, it, it's, there's a time lag and then you mm -hmm. can't, it doesn't work. So what I do is I get my iPad out after the lesson, I record, I got to do this after we get done here. I got to record, I'm mm -hmm. recording the other part to the mm -hmm. duet. And then I make a private YouTube link and I send it to them and then they download it and play it in their lesson and they play a duet with me. Mm -hmm. I see. So it works. <laughs> yeah. Very creative. Very creative. Yeah. So now since this whole thing since last last March, right? We pretty much locked it down. And then just um then we're not going much going anywhere or um does, does it affecting, do you personally know somebody get sick or, or lost lives? Or do you feel this whole pandemic like affecting you emotionally and mentally? I think the worst effect of it for me personally, emotionally, is the fact that I can't get in front of an audience and I can't perform for an audience you know, that is the most difficult thing for me. And it's, it's really frustrating because I just, I just want to make music and be yeah. in that, that space, you know, and yeah. I find myself listening to recordings of my concerts because that's the only, you know, that's like the only connection I have to who I really am anymore is, is hearing, you know, the, the interaction between, right. you know, mm -hmm. like, when you go to one of our concerts or, or any concert that I'm at, <laughs> mm -hmm. I love to talk to the audience. I love to talk to them beforehand and yeah. before the piece, I'll tell them a little about the piece, but I'll, then I'll tell them like a personal connection to the piece or, yeah. you know, why it's important or why we chose this piece for this concert. You know, it's, it's like, it, you know, you feel connected and it's, mm -hmm. I feel very disconnected now. Right. Like, maybe that's the hardest thing for me. Right. Right. Um, but, but, I do know of, I, 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 not any personal friends who have passed away from this, but I had one colleague who had it. Um, she recovered. I had, um, my husband had a colleague who was, he was really sick. I mean, he was in the hospital for, he was gone for 51 days. He was on a ventilator for like 37 days. They didn't mm -hmm. know how he would make it. And then he got like, um, experimental, um, treatment. Mm. the pleurostem from France mm. and he was like the only one that got it and he started to recover naturally. Mm. So there are treatments out there, but there are few and far between and hard to access. And I don't believe that we'll actually be back on stage until there's either a treatment or a vaccine or both mm. and probably both. Yeah. Um, so I don't see us, you know, anyone returning to concert hall really mm -hmm. yet until that happens and it could be a year from yeah. now. Yeah. I pray not. I pray there's something that, you know, is gonna make it possible. But you know how's your girls cool. school? <clears throat> how are your girls uh are they, they they're gonna be online schooling in September? Uh yeah. Well yes. I mean one of them is gonna be here with me and the other is gonna be um up in Vermont. Um mm. she actually they they changed the campus changed their um, housing arrangements mm. and decided to only house the freshmen. So mm. that was another fun thing that happened two weeks before we had to move out of mm. our house that we've been in for 26 years. Um, mm. <laughs> was we found out that we needed to get an apartment mm -hmm. there for her. So um, luckily she has friends and one of them has a 
a mother who's just at least as organized, if not more than me, and <laughs> which is scary when you think about it. Um, and uh, she managed to get an apartment uh, with four bedrooms for the four girls that were planning to be, you know, in the same dorm together. So it was perfect. But like I said, in addition to moving, I also had to drive to Vermont 10 hours and back because we couldn't stay over because of the quarantine. You had to drive, you know, drive a truck, which I've never done. Oh. Drive to Vermont with full of, you know, furniture uh -huh. uh, and drop it off and turn around and drive back. It's like five hours each way. Oh and my God. And then three days later, you know, I come home, pack for two more days. And then the other one had stuff going on and I had to take care of her. And I was like, oh, there's so yeah. much. <laughs> it's just yeah. crazy. I know. <laughs> but we did yeah. it. We're here and, and uh, everything's good. That's great. We start breaking ground next, um, early in September, the end of the month or early in September. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. I'll miss your barbecue. Oh, you missed <laughs> By the way, yeah. this is only for the people who are listening to this talk, Ooh. but the people who bought our house are just absolutely lovely and they have eight kids. Oh my God. Eight. So you must have a big house. Oh yeah. It's like over 4,000 square feet. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was big. It was four floors. So, um, and, and they're just lovely people. I, I was actually at my house last Sunday. I drove up because my, my friend daughter was having her birthday and, and I came up and I, some of our mail was still there. So I stopped by the house and I walked in the house and it was like, this was my house a week ago. And now it's not my house anymore. It was really weird, but they are lovely, lovely people. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful because I think we'll, you know, continue to have a relationship and I'll continue to go back there occasionally. Yeah. Know, yeah. Have a connection to that space. Yeah. And yeah. It was a beautiful, beautiful home. If anybody wants to look at pictures of the house that we sold, yeah. there's a website. It's called oh. 304 Larch Ave. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> right. it's, it's a beautiful right house. Right it's at the right at, uh, yeah. at the comment section. Okay. No, I'll bring out. So uh shall we while you're writing this, um should I pull up your um Gershwin? We'll yes. play a little bit. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's uh let's let's watch another video of Margaret playing Gershwin. And this is with Ron Levy, who is just, yeah. he's my, you rather have. Really I think is. this one, uh, I, I video <laughs> your concert. Yeah. Let's go for it. Thank you. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. Good. Yeah, I love that alto flute. <laughs> yeah, very nice. So um so sexy. The alto flute. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Some you know you know what? Kind of weird. It's like you and I, we never play together. I know. <laughs> yeah. I need to. I need to. Uh, I need to practice, and then, <laughs> then I can play with you. <laughs> That's been the hardest thing these last few weeks. Has just yeah. been yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, we can play GBC. What's we'll find the harpist? GBC. Oh yeah, yeah. We've yeah. done that. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I love yeah. that. So the the link you gave is uh uh your old house. That's the old house, yes, it is. Oh, so, so people, people can go there to see? Yeah, it's a website I put together to kind of facilitate the sale. Oh. Uh, my website. So I just did it on Weebly, you know, the free website. And oh. so I, you know, I just, I didn't take it down. <laughs> it's still there because, you know, we had it all like fixed up and all these gorgeous pictures of it. It's like, I want to just keep it as oh. a website. I I think I saw uh, what you posted somewhere. I forgot. I where. Yeah, on Facebook. It's really <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's so. Um, it was a labor of love. My husband put you know his whole heart and soul into that house. And yeah. We, I mean, twenty six years. You know, yeah. 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 We built it to retire in, and then the taxes got out of hand, so oh, we had to kind of yeah I see. rethink I see. rethink goals. So we're excited to build. We're going to build you know something that's not quite as large, um, and. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be very comfortable. And we're on a pond. We have two and a half acres on a pond. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. That's okay. why we're in Delaware. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. You know, our house is like right on Route 1. I'm just out the out the main drive and boom, right up the highway. And I'll oh. Be in oh, okay. That's wonderful. Wow. Yeah. We're coming. <laughs> we're coming <laughs> to see you. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, now what is the... So currently, do you have any project going on? This, well, yes. I mean, uh, it's more of a uh, uh, administrative now at this point in time because now we have to collect like all the notes for all the pieces. Mm -hmm. But like I said, just before the pandemic hit, I mean, I had gone out on a two-week tour with the Gilbert and Sullivan players. I was down in Florida and Georgia and South Carolina for two weeks in, in February. I came home. 
Um, the next week we had a couple of rehearsals and the next week we went into the studio and finished the last two big pieces um, on the, on the new album that's coming out. And then the next thing I did was skate. I competed the beginning of March, the first week of March, and then everything shut down. So I haven't, we haven't done anything since then, except um, we waited for uh, the takes to come in from the producer and we've just signed off on all of that in the last couple of weeks. Um, and those, the final edits are going to be finished shortly, um, sometime in the next month or so. And then we're going to have a new CD that's going to come out. And we've been on the Albany Records label for the last, uh, for the first six albums of this set. But we are actually changing um, labels for this next album. And it's going to be um, Forte Records. Um, that's Jeffrey James, also um, our consultant, and um, so he uh, he's, he has a record label, and we're going to be releasing this through him. Yeah, tell me about Jeff uh, 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 Jeff James. How he's, do you know him, and what does he do for you? We met, um, gosh, along. He's been with us for about twelve or thirteen years. He does he does like all the press releases, and he tries to come up with um, some ideas to help us get our name out there. And um, and that's basically what he does. Um, he's on a minimal retainer, um, which I wish it could be more, but he's very considerate. And and it's it's a huge help. Um, the, the whole press release thing is just, that's talk about administrative stuff that you don't want to have to do. And, and, and he does a lot of like, he's been doing pushes on social media for us um, all ever since the pandemic started, he's been doing you know, like weekly or bi-weekly, um, you know, like posts and promotions. So he, he, that's, he's like an arts consultant. That's what he does. <laughs> so now he's going to be our, our record, um, label also. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. And where are you going to record when you record? We did record. We're done. We You're already done. Oh, it's okay. Done. Yeah. Okay. It's in the can. And with the, our producer is John Ostendorf. Mm -hmm. um, he's produced their last uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, the last four volumes and this fifth volume of, um, of New Works. Um, he's wonderful. He's a quite well-known uh, producer. And he's also, uh, he was a singer. He sang at the Met. Um, and he is a recording artist. He's, the, you know, from like the 70s, 80s, he was a recording artist, uh, singer, baritone, I believe. He has actually narrating one of the pieces on the CD. So that's very cool. We were so happy to bring him in as a performer. What's unusual about this particular um, release is that uh, we actually have guest artists on it. Every other album we've done has just been the three of us um, or an occasional narrator, but just... Um, this is a compilation of all uh, works that we have had um, either narration or um, have uh, songs that a uh, song cycle. One of them is a song cycle. Um, and it, the songs and stories is the subtitle on volume seven. This is volume seven, but it's a two disc set. So it's huge. It's like 150 minutes worth of music. Um, and it's, it's really exciting. We've got some gorgeous, gorgeous works on there's a, a song cycle um songs from the laurel tree um uh, it's all poems about daphne the you know the goddess um and uh, that's by thomas juno he's a new jersey composer absolutely gorgeous music and we were so blessed um barbara dever who's a mezzo from the met she's really world famous mezzo um is singing this with us and she's just fabulous um, we, we did a piece by Jeffrey Kaufman, um, and, uh, it's called, um, Patterson and it's the po poems of William Carlos Williams, um, Patterson. And it's just about the city of Patterson, which was like a silk barons city. Um, and that's with a narrator with, uh, Frank Bazile, who's also a singer, a lovely singer. He's, uh, sings a piece by Ron Levy, who's also a composer our pianist um and it's a song it's a short song um called el dorado um and it's the, the the mythical city of gold you know that disappeared um and so jeff sings on that and he's also narrating um a piece uh, called vakek revisited which is these little um song not song but the little vignettes of music with narrations in between the story of vatek which i don't know if you know um that that was the original gothic first gothic novel 
um, that was written back in uh, 1830 or something by William Beckford. Um, so it's like this evil prince, um, you know, it's, it's uh, some, I think like Persia or something, you know, it's like got that kind of um, Middle Eastern um, flavor to it. And um, then a uh, huge piece called The Sea Princess um, by Seymour Barab, who has passed away. Um, but this was a, uh, um, it's, it's, it's like a mini opera almost. It's like a little mini operetta and it's for soprano. Um, it actually was written originally for Bob McGrath. I don't know if you know who he is. Do you know Bob McGrath? Ching? Um, he was, he was uh, Bob on Sesame Street <laughs> and he's a good friend of ours. He's been on our board and he's performed with us a number of times. Um, and this was written by Seymour for Bob. Um, and it was a tenor narrator, but Bob has since retired from performing. So when it came time to record this, we decided to go with a female voice and um, brought in an amazingly talented soprano that I had just worked on, with on this other recording that's up on my website um, with the other chamber music group division. Um, the soprano is uh, Timothy Maureen Cole, Timmy Cole. She's wonderful. And this is a tour de force for her. Uh, singing, narrating, character voices, everything. It's, uh, it's amazing piece. It's 48 minutes, 50 minutes long. Mm. One piece. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we have so much music on this program. Another yeah. piece that we have on this on this uh, on this album is called Portraits of Van Gogh. So it's like the story of his life told through four of his paintings with narration. And um, it was originally written for the musicians to narrate. Um, but we decided we'd have professional voice for the recording. So that's when John came into the picture and he's narrating on that piece. Um, and then um, the other piece that's on the album is the Fire Diamond. It's by Roger Stubblefield, which I, I think you probably met him at one of our concerts, right, Roger? Roger, maybe. Um, it's, maybe. A, it's actually the only piece that doesn't have a guest artist on it. It has, a, uh, it's a programmatic work set to a story of the composer's creation. Yeah, I to remember. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, you remember. Yeah, yeah. so anyways, um, is he also a conductor or something? Yes, he is a conductor also. Yeah. So mm -hmm. those are the composers of the Van Gogh composer is uh, Martin Sedek. He's mm -hmm. fabulous. Um, John is here. John is in the audience. John Delmar. John Delmar. Hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, nice to see yourself too. <laughs> yeah, I pulled his comment out. Oh, here. I yeah. see it, yes. Um, and the other composer I neglected to mention the name was uh, the Vatek piece was Carrie Turner, who's um, uh, brother Kyle, I think, plays in, I don't know, but Phil, he's a tuba player. Um, anyways, he's quite well known too. So it's uh, he's a French horn player and composer. Wow. So yeah, it's a, it's a big, big album, a big project, uh, fabulous guest artists. Um, actually, I neglected to also mention that there's a cello on the Patterson piece uh, by Jeffrey Kaufman. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's also um, cool little um, MP3 things that are worked into the piece too. Um, it's a very neat piece that Jeff wrote. So mm -hmm. as uh, yeah, it's it's really exciting, and that's really the next big thing that's happening. Um, like I said, we're we've just completed signing off on the takes um, with the producer, and so in the matter of probably a month or so, we'll be getting the master um, from him, and um, we'll be going into production. Hopefully. Well It'll come out by Christmas. Who knows? <laughs> Christmas presents. Looking yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, wow. so I'm excited about Crazy. that. 90. <laughs> you have commissioned 90 works so yeah. far. Wow. Well, yeah, it's, it's a, a mix of commissions and pieces that have been um, like gifts from the composers. Uh, we've received a number of gifts. We've received mm -hmm. a number of um, commissions that have been commissioned by other people for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Um, and also um, uh, transcriptions. Composers mm -hmm. have taken like existing works and rewritten yeah. them for us. So there's yeah. actually on our website, there's the page that says composers, and there's a list of all of the pieces there. Mm. So, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. So, um, well, uh, thank you guys for watching and to make comments. Hi, John. How are you, John? I have I met John in your party? Oh, no. Mm. He one of my parties oh okay john no. does not come to the party <laughs> you miss <laughs> great joy in life john <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching us and i am ching Zhu. i am uh, actually a violist but 
does not like to practice too much, so ended up being a filmmaker. <laughs> so I have about 600 uh, videos on YouTube. And uh, uh, since the pandemic, I've been interviewing people, interviewing group of people. Um, so today, um, today, Margaret, you are the number 45 episode. And uh, so I try to, I think at the very beginning is because I wanted to um, just to talk to people, you know, because we're locked up, we, we, we have nowhere to go. And then, and then uh, gradually, uh, I, I first talked to my family, uh, talked to my son, my husband, and then talked to my teachers, and then gradually talked to musicians, politicians, uh, specialists, you know, COVID patients, mm -hmm. COVID people uh, recovered. Um, so all kinds of uh, episodes. So check my YouTube channel. And please consider subscribe my YouTube channel. And how, um, how is uh, how is Sean doing? Sean, um, Sean is my son. He is uh, twenty years old. He's going to be third year at the Juilliard School. Um, the the Juilliard is going to be um, you know uh, online first. Perhaps maybe October they they will open. So mm -hmm. who knows? So he's living home. He's staying home he's, with you. He's been living home since March, middle middle of the March. I right. I remember March, March March 14th. He he can, he was kicked out by Julia dormitory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Sean is uh doing okay, not great, but he, I think um, I think he's devastated by the you know by the whole thing. Um, the online course, online lessons, online uh, lectures does not really yeah. sort of turn him on. And so so his schedule is very strange. You know, he will play video game in the middle of the night and sleeps all day yeah. Well, he's, yeah. <laughs> in the That's, daytime. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but he before that, he was doing really great. You know, uh, I don't remember... Uh, in in December, uh, he played uh, with Julia Orchestra. Orchestra. He played the John Harbertson Viola Concerto because he wow. won that uh, Julia Viola. Are they Viola. gonna have? Are they gonna have like any competitions? Like no, for, no, no, not until they can play in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's it's so hard. It's so hard. All, so all the competition is all is all closed down. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So shall we do a? Should we do a rapid fire? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I just asked some silly questions. Um, most uh, most of the questions are silly. Supposed to like uh, supposed not be very long. And hold on a second. I'm trying to move my my screen here. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Be before before I ask you uh, do the rapid fire. I, I, I want to. I want you to tell me a little bit about how, how, how you, how you get into uh, ice skating, oh. and you're so good at that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I just I, I fell in love with it. I I started watching um, in 1988. I started watching the Olympics, and I absolutely fell in love with the way that. Um, the, one particular skater, Brian Boitano, presented himself. And every time he presented himself, it was like he was working to, to make sure that he put out 150% of what he was able to do. And that became such an inspiration for me that when I had to go play a concert or if I had a concerto or a big thing, I would watch that routine because it just inspired so much dedication. And, and it, was, it was a real inspiration for me. And then um, I got married and we moved out, I moved out to New Jersey and, and I wasn't working part-time anymore. So I said, I've got time. Why don't I start to learn how to skate? You know, just want to like know how to go. I'd love to learn how to skate backward. That was like the big thing. I wanted to skate backward. <laughs> so I started and in a year and a half, I was doing like little jumps and spins and little programs and I was competing and, and I just kept doing it. And, and it got, I, I've passed like 14 of the USFSA tests. I become a judge. I judge past sessions and competitions sometimes, not too often with the competitions, but um, cause I just, 
they're weekends and I can't really do weekends because I'm usually working on the weekends. But um, I do a lot of test sessions, local test sessions and kids that are passing levels to get into um, the higher stages of competition. So I'm actually a gold um, test judge. I'm an adult gold um, skater in freestyle figures and in moves in the field. So that's like, wow, so, wonderful. And I've competed. I actually competed the, the first big nationals they had that was just for adults wow. was um, in 1995 <laughs> and, uh -huh. I, and I won in my division. So I'm, I'm a national champion. <laughs> Don't silver awesome. 1995. <laughs> wow. And then I moved up to gold and I never won again. So whatever. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I just competed again for the first time in six years. Um, and it's been hard to keep up with it, obviously. Yeah. With going on, yeah. but I did. And I came in second, which is fine. And yeah. I'm ready to go to nationals in April. I knew what I was going to work on. I knew yeah. exactly what I needed to do. And then, of course, it was canceled. So I'm hoping that, you know, maybe next year I can go back and compete again. Um, well, we'll see what happens. I, you know. I noticed the way you play the flute. And, uh, you know, I was watching a couple of videos of you. And I, I was thinking, being an ice skater, that must be helpful. Or you're just naturally graceful anyway. Because it's so graceful. <laughs> Your, I don't think your that posture. People, people say that I move when I'm playing. I don't think about it. It's just it's uh, whatever. No, the way you in. sit, you know, the way you hold your instrument, the way you move is, you yeah, know, I, 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 no, I was wondering like if it's that because you are an ice skater, you know, it probably helps. It probably helps, you know. Yeah. Just, not, yeah. Because you cannot slouch. But I, I just as a side note, the the Gershwin piece that you heard, that was the slow section in my program this this year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, dear, let's do a rapid fire. Okay, uh, favorite color? Blue. So funny. So many blue. <laughs> so many. So blue many. Turquoise. My friend says blue. Yeah. Okay. What food are you craving for now? Something with cheese in it. <laughs> true American or true or true true Polish. <laughs> uh, okay, so when you do barbecue, are you a chicken person, hot dog person, or hamburger person? Um, I like chicken, but I like a good burger. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. So, what music do you listen to when you drive long distance? Uh, a lot of times I'll listen to um, uh, podcasts. I, I like a lot of different podcasts. Um, but lately I've just been listening to concerts that I've played because I miss it so much. Self-indulging. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I know I can still do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do that sometimes too. Um, so if you're not a musician, what profession you might like to be? Mm, ice skater. <laughs> well, okay, if you win a lottery tomorrow, what will you do? Uh, get the damn house built really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would fund the next eight albums of pieces that we don't have the money or the time because we're all, you know, trying to pay our bills to, to get recorded. Yeah, I just like pay to go to Rhinebeck and record for uh, you know for the next three months. <laughs> um, um, what language do you speak other than English? That's it. That's what, it. What language you would you? Yeah, little French. Little French. What, what language would you like to learn if you have time? If I had time, I'd love to get fluent with French because I I have like a little bit, you know, but not enough. <laughs> Which foreign country you like to visit again? Well, I'd like to go to one I haven't been to yet. <laughs> I'd like to oh, go to okay. England. Or, uh, I've been to England, but I'd like to go to like Ireland and Scotland. I'd like yeah. to Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me too. All right. Um Okay, good. I think I know this one, but I'm asking you anyway. Wine or beer? Wine. <laughs> Last one. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> the more the better. <laughs> yeah, I 
I would like to just also say that um, there were a couple of people that I, I didn't get to mention, um, oh. but I would like to just also mention Trudy Kane, who I, I didn't study with in school. I studied with her early on in my, um, in my uh, just getting started in New York. And um, I just wanted to say she's a wonderful teacher. She's a fabulous teacher. She's like the best kind of teacher because you, she listens to what you're doing and she hears what you're doing and she doesn't try to change it to what she thinks it should be, but she listens to it and says, oh, I think I know what you're trying to do. If you do this, this, and this, it'll come out this way, you know? Mm -hmm. So she's that kind of teacher. So I want to just, I, that was one thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned. And again, Ron and Don, my, my wonderful colleagues, um, and my family that puts up with me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Does does Mike um, does Mike listen to to your concert? A lot of time he can't, right? He has to work. No, well, I mean, now he's retired, he would be yeah. able to, but now yeah. there aren't any. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I which know. is really frustrating. I know. You know? But he's um, yeah. I mean, he, he could never come to other concerts because he yeah. has shows. I mean, so he, speak, would... speaking of Mike, what's the secret of holding your marriage together? Having common goals, I think. Having common goals and, and, and knowing what direction you're headed in. Wonderful. Well, you know, you've been together a long, long time, too. Yeah, I asked my husband, I said, how come you haven't divorced me? He <laughs> says, it's too expensive. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is oh. expensive. So, oh yeah. Speaking of you were to mention a lot of people, uh, but it's interesting. I was, um, I noticed you are a friend with Judy. Uh, what's her? Yeah. Oh, you know Judy? Yeah, we met in uh, a long time ago, nineteen eighty nine in Teton Grand Teton Festival. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's the pianist at Lancaster. I play yeah. with her. Yeah. 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 Just, and she's just lovely. I just love yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, uh, I knew her, and we played Brahms, you know, viola sonata, and she's just great. Yeah, yeah I, I knew her daughter she's then, but she, the daughter was really tiny. Now she's like thirty something. I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's amazing how that happens. They just get older. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, say hello to her if you talk to her you know yeah she just but, called me recently yeah. i think she was yeah. texting me yeah, yeah she's great yeah oh well, so so the way i sometimes do uh when i talk to you i i will go into facebook your facebook then i will click on friends our we have a lot of mutual friends between you and me i think we have 50 mutual friends i would imagine at least yeah so i we never played a concert together now how did that I happen know. So I would invite uh, our mutual friend to uh -huh. the session. So I will invite each one of them, um, you know, on the on the event, uh, Facebook event. So that's why I noticed, like you and uh, Judy, you know, have. Uh -huh. have yeah. But anyway, yeah. so John said he, I knew him. So I, I will, I'll, I'll probably go to check on his uh, Facebook, just make sure. <laughs> He what does he look like? Because I'm sorry, I have like four thousand five hundred <laughs> Facebook. Me. I have like eleven hundred, I think. <laughs> you're my you're <laughs> more simple. So hi, John. So John, please subscribe my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of uh yeah original content stuff and yeah I made a lot of film. Oh by the way, okay before you go, let me make a short announcement for myself. Uh, I have made. Uh, short films uh, here and there, yeah. So my two short films has to do with Black Lives Matter. It's going to be shown in a film festival called Socially Relevant Film Festival of New York on um, this month on twenty first, seven p.m. And it's an online thing, so people can go in there just to click on and then find the free tickets. And then they can watch uh, my film. So the that film festival lasts two days. It's called Voices for Black. Yeah. 
Um, so it's a uh, it's 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 a thematic uh, for two days, just yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys can check it out. Uh, one film is called Just Listen. It's about uh, a violin visual for Elijah McLean. All right. Yeah, and the other one is I just went to the protest and then I shot that. Um, so it's all short film. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so shall we wrap up? Thank you so much, Margaret. It's well, so much fun. Really, really fun. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So um, you know, we'll we'll talk again when there's no audience. <laughs> or with audience. <laughs> So, Wait, yeah. Audience? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So you um have fun with your new house and then your new project and even if we're in a weird situation, you know. Yeah, I will. I always have try to have fun. Yeah. 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 Um, say hello to to Mike for me and say hello to your girls. Hello. And uh, and you have still have like what two cats or one cat? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Sassy and Emma. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Hi to the cats. All right, everybody else. Um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we're going to wrap up now. Um, time <laughs> to go for a uh, happy hour. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye.